What's up guys? Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to build your own heavy hitch weight bracket clone. All right, so at this early stage in the video, I'm sure I've probably lost a fair number of you. So allow me to explain real quick. So this is a tractor. This is the back of the tractor. On the back of the tractor, there's a three point hitch that has three points of attachment, as you can see. Um, this is a heavy hitch that I built that goes onto the three point hitch on the back of the tractor. Um, I understand this is outside kind of, you know, my normal realm, but I needed one for my machine. My dad needed one, and I also have a cousin that needed one. So I started looking at, um, you know, buying one of these, and there were $340. So times that by three, and you're just over $1,000 shipped to your door for three of them. So in the effort to save all three of us some money, I kind of took it upon myself to, uh, to build these. So with that said, for all three of these, that includes the material that you see here, you know, all the, the hitch receiver, the hooks, safety chain hooks, everything you see here, for all three of them, including the powder coating, cost me less than 300 bucks for three of them. So like I said, Heavy Hitch wanted a grand, just over a grand for three of them, and I built them myself for 300 bucks. Um, so what do you need this thing for? So as you guys can see, it has a receiver hitch for trailers. It has a hook that you can hook a chain to, to pull stumps or, you know, whatever, whatever junk you have around your property that you need to remove. And it is also a weight bracket that will accept these 42 pound weights. So this thing is designed so it will accept eight of these 42 pound weights. So how much weight can you add to, with one of these things? Well, so the hitch itself weighs 45 pounds and you can add eight, up to eight of these uh, 42 pound suitcase weights. So between the weight of the hitch and the weight of all eight weights, you could have 380 pounds on the back of this machine. Why you would need that weight, that much weight on the back of a machine is to offset, um, let's say like a front end loader or a snow plow that would add additional weight to the front of the machine. So essentially this is a weight bracket for traction. I'm gonna get you guys all the dimensions on all the parts of this thing. Um, most of this is made out of 3 8 plate, as you guys can see. So you're gonna need a fairly decent welder that's obviously capable of welding 3 8 plate to, uh, to be able to put this thing together. But if you have a decent welder, I mean, there's, there's no reason you couldn't replicate this for 80 to $120, you know, obviously depending on the price of the steel. All right, so everything you see here is what I'm gonna be using to create this weight bracket or um, heavy hitch, if you will. So starting over here on the left, uh, this is a piece of three inch tubing. It has a 3 16 wall thickness and it's cut to uh, 24 inches long. Uh, next piece that I have here is 3 8 plate, so 3 8 thick, three inches wide, uh, cut to nine and a half inches long. Got two of those. Next one is gonna be the same deal, 3 8 plate, three inches wide, and this one's cut to 10 and a half. I've got two of those. Uh, this one here is gonna be two inch wide, 3 8 plate. Um, and this is cut to 10 inches long. Finally, the, uh, the last two pieces here, again, three inch wide, three eighths plate, cut to 16 inches long. Now, this stuff over here on the right is the stuff that um, I just purchased. So I have a receiver hitch. I've got a well on hook that you can use with a chain and uh, some three point pins. The other thing that isn't shown here is I also bought a safety loop for the receiver hitch. It hasn't gotten here yet, so it's not here. So yeah, this is everything that I'm using to create this weight bracket or heavy hitch. Um, I'll have links in the description to all this stuff over here on the right, as well as you know the tools, the welder, all that sort of stuff if you guys wanna check out any of the tools that I'm using. Now to make these cuts, all I'm using is, I'm using a four and a half inch cutoff disc, um, a pneumatic cutoff wheel, just to get the, uh, the inside corners, 
And then uh, finally, uh, once I get the, the shape kind of roughed in and I get the hole punched out, I'm gonna go in with a carbide burr and continue to trim out this square until the uh, receiver tube actually fits inside the three inch tube. So to start laying this hitch out, what you're gonna do, is you're gonna take the three inch uh, square tube and you're gonna find the center. And in the center of the tube is where uh, naturally you're gonna mount the receiver hitch. Um, but to mount the receiver hitch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a hole in the square tube the same size as the receiver hitch, and I'm actually gonna slide the receiver hitch inside the three inch square tubing. When I set the receiver tube in the three inch tube, um, I also cut the back side of the three inch square tube. So the receiver tube is welded on both sides. So it's welded on the outside facing the rear of the, the tractor. And then it's also welded on the inside facing the front of the tractor. And you can see straight through the, uh, the receiver tube. All right, now that we have our two inch receiver tube down through our three inch tube, uh, next thing I'm gonna test fit is gonna be these nine and a half inch long pieces here on the outside. So there's one here, obviously one on the other side that's gonna you know, hold the weight bracket across the center. Um, but before I go ahead and weld this into place, I need a couple holes down here on the end for the pins. So these category one pins that go into the side of this plate have a seven eighths um, bolt down here on the bottom of it. So I need a seven eighths hole through the side of this nine and a half inch plate that's gonna go into the tube. So to do that, what I'm using is I'm just gonna use a step bit. Um, that's the easiest way, you know, probably the cheapest way to get a seven eighths drill bit is, uh, you know, use a step bit. I'll link some in the description. I think they were like 20 bucks for a set of four of them. Um, cut pretty decent and basically do what you need to do to get through this project. You want the hole to end up in the center of that three inch square tube. So to do that, all you're gonna do is you're gonna measure over an inch and a half, mark it inch and a half, measure down an inch and a half, and there's your center. You're gonna drill a hole, inch and a half over, inch and a half down, drill a seven eighths hole. So as you guys can see, I'm using a step bit to drill this seven eighths hole. Um, these category one hitch pins that I'm using for this hitch um, are seven eighths in diameter. Um, the thread on them is seven eighths 11 if you guys need to buy a tap for that. Um, but yeah, so I'm drilling this hole by hand on both of these, actually all these holes on this thing I'm drilling by hand. So once I get the holes drilled, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the category one pins, put them through the hole in the plate, and then put the nut on the back side of the pin. And then I'm just gonna tack the pin in place. Um, once I get the tacks on there, obviously I'm gonna take the the pins out and then I'm gonna finish weld the nuts on the backside completely all the way around before I put these two metal sides onto the bottom of that three inch tube. After you get your receiver tube tacked up into place, I'm taking the, uh, the nine and a half inch pieces with the nut welded to the inside. That's gonna go just like that right inside the tube. So I'm gonna tack all this stuff together um, do a test fit on the weights, and then I'm gonna go through and uh, finish weld everything. So taking a look down on the table, if you guys look, um, I have the, the two metal straps that I'm using for my top link. Um, I already pre-drilled the hole for the top link pin. Uh, that's a three quarter hole that I used, and I did it the exact same way that it, I drilled the other couple holes for the sides. So measure over a half uh, inch and a half, measure down an inch and a half, that'll give you the center of the, you know, three inch. And that's where my three quarter inch hole went. Drilled it the exact same way with a step bit. So obviously at this point, you know, I got to find the center of the hitch so I can attach the, uh, you know, the, the top link in the center. Once I have the material sort of tacked into place for the top link, I also put the uh, two inch uh, you know, strip in between the two top top links there. Um, all that's just tacked into place. Once all that stuff is tacked into place, I could get my actual um, bar that's going to hold the weights on the hitch. So everything is loosely tacked at this point. 
I'm spending a little bit of time here to basically make sure everything's straight at this point because the more tax you put on, if it's crooked at this point, the harder it is to take it apart and the harder it is to fix. So spend some extra time here, make sure you, uh, you know, have everything nice and straight and centered up like it's supposed to be, and then go through and finish weld it. Now at this point, as you guys can see, I've got everything tacked into place. Um, I've got four good tacks on each on each weld where I'm going to weld you know finish weld everything. Um, at this point, I can go ahead and start attaching the weights. Now, before you uh, before you attach the weights and do all that stuff, make sure you have everything in the final position. You know, make sure your two weight brackets are even with one another. One isn't higher than the other. Things like that. Um, but yeah, so at this point, you can you can put you know four weights here four weights here and verify everything fits. Um, but with that said, so these are the weights that I'm gonna be using. Uh, these are John Deere, OE John Deere 42 pound suitcase weights. And I'm sure some of you are like, okay, who cares, no big deal. Um, the reason this matters is I've got three different versions of suitcase weights on hand. So I have this John Deere weight, I have this older John Deere weight that are all 42 pound, and I also have a cheap Chinese knockoff weight that is 42 pounds. The reason I'm saying something to you guys now is the, the width differences for some reason on these new John Deere weights are slightly wider than the older version and the Chinese knockoff. So this one measures like two inches and nine sixteenths, just over two and a half inches. This one's two and a half, this one's two and a half. The reason that matters is when you compound that by four weights, that's a quarter inch difference. In a bracket this small, a quarter inch is a big deal. So have your weights on hand before you go building this thing because I'm gonna tell you guys right now, this is revision two because revision one, I built everything off of these weights. I got these weights on hand from my dad and I couldn't put four on here. So I actually had to reduce down the center of this a little bit from two and a half to two inches. So like I said, there are differences in the weights. So make sure you have the weights on hand when you go design this and build it yourself. So at this point, I've got all my weights test fitted. Everything fits like it's supposed to. I'm gonna go ahead and finish weld everything on, uh, on the hitch. So as far as my welder, I have a ESOB Rebel ACDC 205 multi process welder that will MIG, it will TIG, it will also stick all in one box. I've had it for about a year now. You know, obviously I'm not an industrial user. I don't use it super heavy, but it's been flawless. Um, I've had no issues with it whatsoever. Um, if you guys are looking at a multi process welder, I highly, highly recommend it. So shortly after I got the hitches finished up, um, we got about four or five inches of snow, so I was able to go out and test it out. Um, on a machine this small, obviously uh, 400 pounds on the back of the machine is a little overkill. Um, it kind of makes it hard to steer with a plow on the ground, but otherwise it works great. Um, works great for like back dragging up against the house, so you put the blade down against the house and drive backward, works awesome. For me, there's something like really satisfying about watching snow curl off the end of a, a snowplow. Maybe I'm just weird, which is a definite possibility, but I don't know, I enjoy it. So when it came to the design of the heavy hitch, um, I'll put a picture on the screen of um, what I found online as far as the dimensions. Um, the only dimension that I kind of struggled with and I could not find anywhere was the width between uh, these two pieces that make up the top link. Um, the dimension that I came up with from the inside to the inside here is two inches. I know if you go two and a half, um, these inner weights won't fit. You only be able to get three and three. You won't be able to get the fourth weight in here. Um, the other dimension that I really couldn't find online either was the height of uh, this plate here in the center. So 
On my design, I have uh, four and a half inches from the top of this plate to the center of this pin. Now, I don't know if that is going to be quick hitch compatible. Um, I don't know because I personally don't own a quick hitch. Um, so it may work, it may not. Um, to be quite honest with you guys, I have no idea because like I said, I don't own one. All right guys, that's what I got. Um, I'll, put a, I'll put a link in the description to Heavy Hitch um, as well as uh, links to Amazon to some of the parts that I use to build my own version of their uh, you know, Heavy Hitch. Um, the other thing that I'll put down in the description for you guys is a list of materials that I used and the dimensions for all the parts. So if you guys want to replicate this, you know, go down in the description and you guys will be able to see, you know, exactly what I used here if you missed it in the video. Um, as always, guys, if you guys like the video, hit like. If you want to see more content, go down and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.